Hi, welcome to another Stream Developers tutorial. This video helps you to quickly test and send iOS remote push notifications in a Swift UI or UI Kit app. We will be using the simulated iOS device along with the command line to send and test alert notifications. So let's begin with alert notifications overview. I will show you how to design a notification payload and all its fields. We will configure the Swift UI app to send and receive notifications. We will test the notification we design and finally use a custom sound to enhance the notification experience. So let's test the final project before we create one from scratch. I will go to Xcode and run the app. To test the notification, we should go to the home screen. So the app you see here is what we are going to test. You can see it has 10 badges. That is the one you see here. To trigger the notification, I will drag the APNS certificate to the home screen. That displays the notification with sound. Let's try it again. We can also trigger the notification from the command line. So let's launch WAP and trigger the notification from there. So the sound from the notification uses a custom sound. So we can also use a default sound from the system by replacing the test string here with default. I will drag here to go to the home screen and drag the APNS certificate to the home screen. So we now have a default sound from the system instead of the custom one. This is the notification experience we are going to build in this tutorial. To test the final project, go to this GitHub repository, Stream Tutorial Projects, and select the folder iOS Swift UI. Then you pick Alert Push Notifications. You can explore the individual files here and the sound associated with it. Or download the project as zip and test it yourself. We also have an article version of this tutorial, so you can check the stream website how to test remote push notifications with iOS simulators. So this contains everything we are going to do in this video. So you can read about this article as well. To go beyond testing push notification with the simulator, you can check the push notification section of our chat documentation. You can also check our video documentation for VoIP push notifications. Before we continue, it would be great if you can like or subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so, or leave a comment on the video. In the Xcode project, let's select File, New, and Project. Here we leave iOS as the platform and select app, then next. Let's call it alert push notifications and click next. Then we save it to a location. We don't need a preview, so I will press option command and enter to hide it. We now have a blank Swift UI project. Let's look at an overview of user notification and what we are going to do specifically in this video. Basically, user notification has two forms. We have local notification, and also remote notification. In this tutorial, we are focusing on remote notification. Under remote notification, we also have all these notification types, but our focus is on alert notification. The main purpose of alert notification is to inform users about new information they can interact with. For example, in a video conferencing app like Zoom, push notifications can be used to notify meeting participants when a call participant joins or leaves the meeting room. Also, in a live streaming app like Twitch, push notifications are used to inform guests when the room or the stream goes live. Let's look at what alert notification contains. A typical alert notification is just a JSON dictionary, consisting of an apps field. It has a title and a short description of the type of notification you want to display to users. There is also a sound field. This field is optional. The badge field is also an optional field. So this is the main content of a typical alert notification. The notification must also have a trigger and request. The trigger determines when and how to show the notification. The request registers the notification content to the system. So this is the content we are going to use as our APNS certificate in order to trigger the notification. So you now know the overview of an alert notification and the content it contains. At this point, we will create a remote notification payload in the Xcode project. So let's control click here and select the option new from template. Then we scroll down. Over here, we are going to select the file 
GeoJSON file. So we are going to add this file to the target and create. In the project navigator, let's rename the file we just added. We will call it alertpushes.apns and press enter. First, we are going to remove the content here and add all the fields. The first field is the simulator target bundle. To get the target bundle, let's select the root folder. You can see here we have the bundle identifier com.emosgenfee.alertpush notifications. So let's paste it here as a string. Next, we should add the apps dictionary. The apps dictionary contains the alert notification. So let's add the alert dictionary and specify the title and the body of the notification. So inside the alert, we should specify the title. Let's call it all hands. After the title, we also need to specify the body. For that one, we can say Amos has joined the meeting. After the alert, we also have the optional fields like sound and badge. Let's specify the sound as default and add the badge as well. Let's put, for example, five. Next, we have to specify the trigger and the request. So this is the content of the notification payload we are going to use. This is going to serve as our APNS certificate. Let's open content view and modify the content here. I will remove everything here and paste this. So when the app launches, we will show a text here and the current date. We have now created the alert notification payload. Next, let's configure the SwiftUI app to send and receive the alert notification. We are going to do this in the main app file. That is the apps conformer file. So let's select it over here. User notifications are not supported in SwiftUI by default. So let's import UIKit. Then we will also import user notifications. To configure the alert notification, we need four steps. First, we should declare a U1 user notification center delegate. Then we register for push notifications and set up a callback function. And finally, connect the alert notification declaration class to the SwiftUI app. So let's begin with the first step. We should create an app delegate class. Then we make it conform to the following. UI application delegate and user notification center delegate. Inside this class, we will add couple of functions. First, we have the application function. Next, we should register for push notifications. So here we will add another function and call it register for notifications. In the body of the register for notification function, we will add the following. In this function, we ask the user's permission to show an alert notification by calling the request authorization method and specify the options alert, sound, and badge. Next, we should call this function inside the application function and return true. So in the first step, we declared user notification center delegate. This declaration will assign the app delegate as a delegate of the notification center and will notify the app when the user opens the alert. So SwiftUI does not implement app delegate by default. That is why we created this class. Let's go to our third step by creating a callback function. So here I'm going to add this function. Inside this function, we need to create a completion handler and add an array to specify the badge and sound of the notification. Next, we have to add another function here to get a device token of the iOS simulator and convert it to the required format. So inside this function, we should create the device token. Let's call it token. Let's modify the code completion. So over here, we use the map function to convert each byte of the device token into a two-character hexadecimal string. So this percentage 02 ensures that each byte of the device token is represented by at least two characters. After converting each byte of the device token into a hexadecimal string, we use the join method to join the strings into a single string. So that is our third step. Let's go to the final step, that is step four. Over here, we need to connect the app delegate class to the SwiftUI app's lifecycle. We can do that using UI application delegate adapter. So here we pass the app delegate class dot self and add the variable app delegate. So this is all we need to do to configure the notification. First, we create the notification payload consisting of all these fields. Then in the apps conformer file, we set up the notification with UI notification center delegate declaration. Then we register for push notifications and set up registration callback functions. Finally, we connect the app delegate class to the SwiftUI app's lifecycle. Before we run the app, let's change the device and select a simulated iOS device 
for example, iPhone 15. So let's run the app. To display the notification, we should send the app to the background. Then we drag the payload to the home screen. To trigger the notification from the command line, we should get this device's identifier. We go to Window and select Devices and Simulators. Let's copy the device identifier. Let's look at the command we should run in the command line. So here we use this command line tool, which is part of the Xcode command line tools. This command is going to help us run any iOS device simulator we specified here. Previously, I showed you how to get a device identifier. So once you have that, we just need to add the bundle identifier. We also saw this previously. Finally, we need to specify the path or the file. That is the path of the notification payload we created in Xcode. So for this command, there are three things we have to do. We specify the simulator identifier, the bundle identifier, and then the path to the payload, our launch terminal. Let's run the command xc run, followed by simctl. Then we paste the device identifier. Next, we should add the bundle identifier, that is .alert push notifications. Next, we should specify the path of the notification payload. So that is this file, alertpushes.apns. I will go to the location I saved the project and drag the APNS file to the terminal. I now have the simulator here to display the notification. So let's press enter. So this uses the default notification sound. Let's look at how we can add a custom sound. I'll go to the browser. We are going to use a sound from Design at Meta. When you scroll down, over here, we have Sound Kit for prototypes. You can download different kinds of sounds from here for testing. I already have one, so we are going to use that. I will go to the location I saved the sound file and drag it to the project bundle. We are going to show the sound customization in the project I showed in the beginning of the video. It is not the one we created from scratch. So here you make sure you add the sound to the target and click finish. Let's copy the sound name and open the payload. Over here we need to change the sound value from default and paste the sound name. Then we run the app again. If we now drag the payload onto the home screen, you can see we now have the custom sound. We can also trigger it from the command line as well. So this ends our tutorial on sending and testing iOS remote push notifications using the simulator and the command line. Check out all the links in the description of this video to learn more about iOS push notifications. Thanks for watching.